Right, so let's just quickly show you the overworld so that we didn't know we had. Ian, you can apparently just go to the special stages whenever you want. Right, we'll Lost there. Labyrinth. Mad, <laughs> mad gears. <laughs> I, I hope that's for like Glaswegian junkies. <laughs> I've got some mad gears for you, mate. Let's go to Dr. Eggman's secret base. It's for mad gears. I like how you're just walking. <laughs> Oh, uh, usually it doesn't usually seem hurt you in the other games. Yep. They're really shaking things up. Helpful steam. Just like uh, Bioshock, where they steam powered turrets know how to shoot. <laughs> they know the difference between right and wrong. Well, how are you right? Look at all these fucking... Well, that's what the game tries to teach you. Yeah, no, that's why I mentioned it. By actually not doing anything that helps uh, make moral choices. Or like not explaining moral choices properly at all. Right, so did I just do one level through the casino zone and then it just took us straight to the overworld? Uh, yeah. Right. Which is kind of strange because, I mean like, why, so you only have to do one area out of the second level and therefore you unlock the overworld so that you can make choices from now on. So they just force you to play four levels and a boss and then you can just do whatever the fuck you want. Including go to special zones willy nilly. The day games still need scores no, at the end of them. They never needed scores. Why? Right. I'd rather we played it and talked about it, right? But I'll talk about it now because it's in this game. In Resident Evil, you get a score at the end. Yeah, I've never understood. And a rating. Yeah. And it's a game about shooting zombies. Why? It's not, yeah, it's not an arcade game, you're not trying to get on top of a leaderboard. At least yeah. with Sonic, it makes kind of some sense, you could speedrun it, so you can get, see how fast you can get to the end, or uh, high, uh, try and get a high score, so that's a little replay value. Yeah. But Resident Evil has a storyline in everything. Yeah. It's the whole problem of, like, those kind of games and that kind of hang hangover that, like, Capcom still does it. it. Almost every game Capcom puts out, there's some sort of rating system in it. And I don't understand why, because they're usually story-driven games. Supposedly story-driven games. <laughs> but uh, I guess people just like it. People like that sort of, that confirmation that they did good. Like, oh man, that was uh, an S rank, that level. But is, every, is, but is every game about being told you're the best? Yes. Like game like fair enough, I play FIFA, right? Apparently badly. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently badly after recent results. But you know, I play FIFA to win. That's the whole point it. That is a game about winning, but yeah, yeah. that's the whole point it. Try and outscore your opponent. Mm -hmm. But Resident Evil is a game like let's take Resident Evil four for example. You you just try to save the president's daughter. You know what I mean? <laughs> Think about that and you get scored. Yeah. It's like, how well did you save the presence there? Surely the only score is whether or not she actually lives. But she does, I assume. She does, yeah. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> I was... <laughs> the first game, first three games had it as well, but didn't really, didn't really have a story. Did it really? No. Kinda. Whiskers a, ba a baddie. I get well, yeah. I guess they had they had stories. They just weren't very fleshed out stories. Whoops. <laughs> they uh, they weren't very fleshed out stories. But now it's like it's been there the whole time. I think. Um, uh, I I they're not very fleshed out stories. But now you've got these really really high concept, like amazingly in depth, ridiculous Hollywood B movie ish kind of storylines. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's just... And that's okay, it's like, you can do the whole camp thing if you want, but... Are they actually going for camp, or are they trying to make serious, like, engaging Hollywood-esque stories and fucking it up because they're Japanese people trying to write for an American audience? Like, I, I have never been able to understand the Resident Evil and I don't understand the appeal of 5 and 6 and stuff like that. At least 4 has something of an atmosphere. Yeah, we're retreading old ground, we've said this before. Yeah, I know. I never get tired of slagging Capcom, though, I'll do it all day. There goes, there goes our Capcom pen. 
Uh, fine, I don't want them. Fuck them. <laughs> nah, I'm just, huh? I'm just kidding. You can like whatever the fuck you want. Just don't date the mouse. I know. You, you can, you'll be wrong, but you can like whatever you want. Okay. <laughs> like <Why? how> slowly. <laughs> Why is Sonic so fucking slow? Steam heat. I'm, I'm bringing that back. Good. I don't remember when I did it before. I don't know why. Um, <laughs> don't know why I'm saying I'm bringing it back. <laughs> Uh, was that not in the FIFA playthrough? Oh, who, who knows, man. I don't, I don't, never want to watch that again. You need to build up your spin. Yeah. Fucking genius. And you're the one with the glasses as well. <laughs> oh, no. Get out of Eggman's face. I didn't get the specials on. Two fingers right up your shitter. <laughs> I right. watched... Are we, are we actually done now? Wait, no, wait, no. I watched, I watched uh, Irvin Welsh's Acid Toast the other night, and there was this brilliant bit... Well, this woman was just shagging this guy's uh, dad, uh, shagging this guy's ass, and it he he was a fly on the wall watching it, and it was it was because they had these brilliant Edinburgh Edinburgh accents. <laughs> it was so funny. It was just shagging this. I'd say, do my ass, do my ass, and anyway. <laughs> um, <laughs> isn't that isn't that scene in fucking uh, uh, in filth as well? Doesn't he? Do like a kind of fly in the wall thing and fell? No. No? I'm just fucking dumb shit, man. <laughs> I, I don't remember much about Phil other than that it was uh, shit. The, he's, what, the woman's like that to him. What, what music have you been listening to the day? And he's like, ah, Dolly, Dolly Parton, Ken! Dolly Parton! Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, fair enough. It sounds, uh, like, uh, it sounds like a great film. It's, it's something that's quite funny, actually. It's supposed to be funny. Uh, Ewan Bremner gets turned, he sw sw switches bodies with a baby, and the and the baby looks terrible. <laughs> the, it really looks, it's just, it's from 19, the film's from 97 or 98, I can't remember, and it just looks really bad. It's like a CGI baby? No, no, it's like an animatronic baby. Oh, that sounds horrible. What's the first story, what's this, the second story is called A Soft Touch, just about a guy who doesn't stun up for himself, that's basically it, but it, it's good. The film's shit, but it, it's kind of interesting. It's got interesting themes, uh, I guess. Yeah. But it's just hard to uh, watch with the Edinburgh, Edinburgh accents. How can that be gone that way if you're running the other... Oh, I guess it could. Because oh, yes. it's 2D. <laughs> uh, I saw an hour, I watched an hour film uh, yesterday, actually, with Michael Keaton in it. And he clones himself because his, his life's too hard. <laughs> <laughs> of course, that seems like a very... I can't remember what it's called, Joe. No, I can't remember what it was called. Multiplicity or something like that? Multiplicity? Yeah, something like that. It was terrible. That's, it sounds bad. Two Birdmen. I don't know how you... I don't know how the hell you found time to watch all these <laughs> shite films. Because Film 4, they just they pump, they pump some stinkers out, but then they show Kill List, you know that? Show, yeah. the, they show the good stuff. They and, help fund and, some really good I, stuff. Uh, and they showed Nick Cave's film last night as well. It was fucking brilliant. That was found, uh, f uh, found, founded by... Uh, f he lives in Brighton, do you know that? Really? Yeah, he's, and they, the people who made that film made Brighton look fucking beautiful, honest <laughs> to God. It makes you want to go to Brighton. Oh, it's so it's so well filmed. Ray Winston's in it as well. <laughs> he he kind of teleports into Nick Cave's motor. All right. And starts to, to discuss what it's like being in our 50s. Yeah. So it's really good. I just wish we'd went to see the pictures. Yeah, but I don't, I don't do that anymore. Fuck you, Cineworld. Yeah, we're kind of, we're we're over that shit. Cineworld, uh, fucking ruined films. And uh, it, what well, for? Uh, that, that, it's more the fat pigs for me. I can't. I, yeah, actually. I, oh, oh, I forgot to tell you when I was in seeing Avengers and Dundee in a Cineworld. Um, there was a fucking fat pig directly uh, to the right of me, just behind me. Um, and <laughs> they were. In a really in really quiet moments as well, because for some reason in the film spoilers by the way, uh, they go to Jeremy Reynolds house and they find his wife or something like that, and yeah. I'm like, ah, why does anyone give a fuck about Hawkeye? I thought, and I thought, during this moment, she's pregnant, right? And I was like, what the fuck is that noise? And I could just hear this, and I was I looked over and it was this guy, this fat pig. <laughs> and he, he just kept fucking rubbing himself or his arm or something or like. Something. He was rubbing something. Was he? Was he jacking it? I thought he was jacking it because there was a pregnant woman on screen. 
but then he kept doing it. Even, I thought even Black, when they were pissing about. I thought Black Widow and Hawkeye were pumping in that film, were they not? No, it's the Hulk. She's, she wants to fuck the Hulk, but oh, then the oh. Hulk fucks right off. Again, spoilers by the way, the Hulk fucks off at the end. Really? So she... No, but in the first Avengers, they, Jeremy Reiner and Scott Johansson have a thing, do they know? No, no, they're just friends who, like, sort of, uh, they've seen the same sort of shit. Uh. So they're kind of in the same boat. Um, but yeah, she's developing a thing for, <clears throat> for Banner in it. And then Banner just goes away. Well, his loss then. Yeah. It's because he's like, if he, uh, he freaks out um, because she wants to be with him. Because he, he's just that kind of character. But what happens, it, what happens if he like burns his toast? Is he gonna? <laughs> Is he gonna <laughs> hold, hold it? <laughs> You're getting my blood gone. <laughs> Oh, they should totally do the next Hulk film should be filmed in, filmed in Glasgow and they should get a Glaswegian actor to play it. And, jo- and John, I hear you I hear you cry uh, Gerard Butler. Um all I can say to that is he's no for Glasgow. Uh for one, I would never say Gerard Butler for any movie role. <laughs> <laughs> but, but two uh I think it would need to be someone a bit fatter. It would need to be someone like a little well, a little fighting poncho. He, he just he, he just like He's just away getting his... I'm just going to let this happen for a while. He's just, he's just getting his... Uh, fucking his carry out. <laughs> and a nuclear bomb goes off. <laughs> and it's just like the most... Like, the most mediocre things. So it's like, go get my newspaper. <laughs> and it. she doesn't need it. And, she, and you just, you're just like, Rah! you've burnt this toast intentionally. <laughs> As if we need any more bad reputation in Scotland for being a bunch of fucking drunken buffoons. It turns out, he, you know, he's no the Hulk, he's just, he's just a cunt. <laughs> yeah, he's just, he's just angry. It's alright. It's pretty much the neutral setting for every Scottish person if you believe the English media. Something is, uh, Yeah, and this is a show off, this is a show about games in nerd culture. I will not hear, hear politics. I know, we'll have to watch ourselves, but occasionally we are going to let some shit slip, I imagine. Nerd culture. <laughs> if, I mean, like, if we could actually... Watch it! Oh no! <laughs> you dropped all your money! <laughs> <laughs> He's still got any arms now! <laughs> is he going to blow up? I think he is! I've forgotten what they do when they've got no arms in the original game. And when I say original game, I mean it, was, it had original ideas in it. Were they always homing like that? Or like fucking homing missiles? Uh, yeah, they were really deadly, those fucking mantis things. Pure, pure psycho mantis, man. <laughs> and you can look forward to other video guiding and Transylvania references later on. At a later date. <laughs> I'm getting, my blood's getting fucking pure boiled here. <laughs> Fuck's sake, clean that toilet. A wild heart cake. Yeah. I'm back here. Yeah. Uh.